Hi, everybody. Welcome here tonight. Sorry, three minutes late. It's all good. When a man has a brand new baby, you know, he's going to run three minutes late. That is totally cool. Glad you guys are here. Thank you so much for being here tonight. We are going to talk about how to love an avoidant man. We're going to be talking about when avoidant men are worth waiting for and loving. Uh, when avoidant men are going to destroy your heart. We're going to talk about that. Thank you from the audience. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Mel, good to see you. Well, home office, good to see you. Vital, awesome. Hawk, glad to see you. Jeanette, thank you for being here as well. Um, we're going to blow the roof off this one tonight. It's going to be fantastic, okay? Avoidant men. Let's dive right into this, okay? Avoidant men. Somebody asked, what makes a man turn avoidant? Let's get there first so we can walk through avoidant attachment and help you understand when an avoidant person is going to open up. And when an avoidant person is a good a good person who's just scared and avoidant versus people who are more manipulative, more hurtful, and are going to absolutely break your heart no matter how much love you give to them. We'll talk about that. Archeon, good to see you. Did the baby come? Yes. Very late, late over the weekend. So yes, wonderful, wonderful. We're very excited. It is our third daughter, fifth child. So Green Gatsby, welcome in here. Good to see you as well. Jocelyn, happy to see you too. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, what creates avoidant attachment? Let's start there. Avoidant attachment very often is for, it's, I mean, it's formed in early childhood. It is formed from the belief that nobody will ever be fair with you. And especially that during times of stress, other people will be chaotic and unpredictable. So you have to be safe against them. Usually avoidant people, they tend to have signs, external signs of very low oxytocin. So oxytocin is that love hormone. And when you have high oxytocin, you display high levels of spontaneous affection and you are more likely to be intimate and warm and, and happy with other people and value those connections. And a lot of people with avoidant attachment do not really have that. They don't show signs of that. They often, they seem to display signs of very low oxytocin. So they may not have got much as a child, right? They may not have received that warmth and that, that care and that nurturing that they need. Um, from that, most avoidant people that I've worked with over the years, I have worked with so many avoidant people. I help them in my coaching all the time. There's some in my private community. Um, I, I just, I work with a great number of avoidant people and many of them have no frame of context for love. They have never felt love uh, directed at them. They've never been loved in their understanding and they don't know what that frame is, what that, that relationship would feel like. They don't have a context for feeling loved. Put another way, one thing I've heard a lot, some avoidant people, when you ask them, you know, when was a time that you felt particularly lonely or alone? And they'll say, I've never felt lonely or alone. And you'll say, never, you've never felt alone. And they may not know that they have always felt alone. They may have no frame of reference at all because they have never not felt alone. So the status quo is always exactly the same. Gatsby, you're a new papa again. Again, fifth time. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for saying congratulations. I appreciate you. Arkin, how's the sleep? You know, pretty good. My new child is a pretty good sleeper. They tend to come out pretty good sleepers. That's freaking cool that your father five. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to live in peace with my avoidant husband. I hear you. I hear you. And I hear that a lot. Um, keep in mind that most avoidant people, there, there's flavors, okay? Avoidant attachment is on the spectrum. Where's the camera? There you go. Avoidant attachment is on this spectrum. Okay. You go from this side. No, I'll do this side because the camera's flipped. You go from this side. Okay. Um, I don't want to hurt other people. I don't want them to hurt me. I just want to stay safe. I don't trust other people. I trust resources like money. So I'm just going to work really hard. I'm going to have really good skills. I'm going to be kind of people please a little bit, but keep them at arm's length. I'm just going to get through my day. I'll be alone most of my life. I may have one or two short relationships, dating or very few, but or maybe just hookups, but nothing serious. And I will not hurt anybody. I just don't want to get hurt and I'll stay away from other people. Some of these guys come into my coaching practice in their 40s or 50s and they say, Adam, I have barely had any romantic relationships my entire life. I have a, I'm, I'm an executive or a business owner and I, I feel like I've missed everything. What do I do? What is missing? Okay. I call this like the nervous avoidant or the ethical avoidant, the scared cat over here. Um, but as you slide down that spectrum, 
right? As the people slot in differently on the spectrum, I should say, as, as avoidant people go in on that spectrum and fit in in different spots down this pathway is more and more and more narcissistic tendencies, more and more manipulative tendencies over toward this area. Okay. This area is like narcissistic personality disorder, avoidant personality disorder, uh, antisocial personality disorder, sociopaths, narcissists, hurtful, manipulative people over here off the side. Okay. Giant spectrum of avoidant attachment, giant spectrum. Okay. Very, very different. And they're very, very different from each other. So this broad brush that we paint avoidant people with all avoidant people are manipulative, hurtful monsters that love bomb and breadcrumb and, and suck the life out of you. Right. Well, maybe over on this side of the spectrum. Okay. Uh, yeah. That side of the spectrum, maybe over on this side of the spectrum. Okay. Hurtful, manipulative. There are people like that. Okay. And they do happen to have avoidant attachment style, that flavor of it. But the people over here would be horrified if they accidentally hurt somebody's feelings. Okay. Very, very different. So keep that in mind. Uh, the, the core factor here is not believing that other people will be fair with you. Not believing other people will really care about you. Not believing that when the, when the crap hits the fan, so to speak, that other people are going to act ethically. That other people will act uh, kindly, that other people will work with you, that other people will do anything but make it worse. And it's the belief that you alone have to hold up the world. You know, Atlas holding the globe, right? That's that's the avoidant person's mentality. I am the only ethical person who's trying to do what's right. I will do everything I can to do it right. Okay. Very, 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 very common. So the research shows this is happening in about 25% of adults in America, primarily in men, but also in women. Women who have avoidant attachment style, none of the romantic conventional wisdom works on them or for them. Okay. They have no, uh, no almost very, very few of the typical behavior patterns that you would expect in a woman who's in love. Um, their, their sex drive is very different. Everything about them is vastly different because of that avoidant attachment and what it does. It, it is enormously different in women. Um, avoidant men is the topic here tonight. So we're going to focus on that, but we can talk about avoidant women here in the future. I love working with avoidant women and, and partners who have avoidant women in them. Um, it, it's an incredible experience helping them turn that around and helping them find fulfillment. So if you guys have questions on that another time or anyone wants help working on that, let me know. I do work extensively with couples like that and, and individuals, um, but avoidant men. So the ones you are looking for, right? The ones on my videos, how to love an avoidant man. A lot of the comments there have been, Adam, why are you encouraging women to get into relationships with abusers and be a doormat for them while they are beat with a stick every day, right? Like, like horrible accusations that I want people to get hurt. People who obviously have never seen my, my body of work of years and years of teaching healthy, secure attachment, teaching people to become secure. They've never seen the attachment bootcamp video course that I offer that teaches you the 10 steps to go from anxious attachment or from avoidant attachment into secure attachment. They haven't seen my extensive library of hundreds of videos on this channel saying, guys, become secure. Stop being insecurely attached. Become securely attached. Your life gets so much better. Right. They, they pop in on one video and they think I'm teaching people to be doormats. Not the case. Uh, by the way, the avoidant, the, the attachment boot camp video course currently 20% off on my new year sale. Um, I will drop a link to that. It's one more day, another 24 hours. That's 20% off right now. If you want to fix your attachment, <sighs> avoidantly attachment, here's how to determine if they are the ones who are going to break your heart into 5 billion pieces, or if they are the ones who are going to actually care for you and reciprocate your love. Okay. The scared cat avoidant people versus the manipulative avoidant people. Okay. Scared cat, nervous, ethical avoidant, whatever you want to call them here. We don't even have a name for them because we just ignore them. We just lump them in with the other avoidant people. Um, the loving caring, but scared, avoidant people. They don't know that love is possible. Number one. Okay. They don't know that love is possible. They are deeply surprised to hear that other people open up to each other. They are confused at how that works. They are confused at what people get out of that. And, and they are genuinely confused and they actually sit and ponder it. Like, why do people open up to each other? What is the benefit? They don't understand. Okay. 
they genuinely try to give good feelings to other people more than they take from them. Okay. They try to give other people good feelings and they really try with all of their heart to make other people happy. Part of that's a defense mechanism to stay safe. It is part of that's a defense mechanism, but part of it is they legitimately don't want to hurt anyone. They are deeply horrified at the thought of hurting somebody or exploiting somebody. Okay. Deeply hurt at the thought of that deeply. Like they, they do not want to hurt people. They are very empathetic. They don't understand other people's feelings, but they really care about other people and, 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 and other people's suffering. They legitimately do. And they try to, they try to remove it if they can. Okay. They are nervous about having conversations, but when you follow the steps from those videos that I laid out, right, sitting down with them, explaining, look, I know it's, it's this is going to be an uncomfortable conversation, but I'm, I want to be fair with you. So at the end of this conversation, we will talk about what's fair and I want to make sure you feel it's fair as well. They will actually respond to that. Okay. They actually will be kind of confused, but they'll kind of ease into the conversation. When you express to them that you want to be fair, they will, their, their anxiety levels, maybe even their frustration levels, or they're kind of like, you know, hostile, po your posturing, like when a cat arches its back, that will kind of calm down. It's, it's bristling. Their bristling fur will kind of calm down. And I'm not saying that they're going to become angry and hostile and screaming at you and abusive. And then they'll suddenly be calm and quiet. That's not the thing. These people don't go to that level. Um, but they'll, they'll bristle and you'll, you'll see them like their eyelids get peeled back and they're tense and their nostrils are flaring and they're scared. And then as you, as you talk with them, they, their body language will relax. Okay. The tension will start to decrease. These are the people that you can work with. Okay. Reassuring them. Like I did, like I mentioned in that video, you, you guys saw the two videos, you know, there's extensive information, like 40, 40 combined minutes of what to do and what not to do with these kinds of people in those, in those videos. Um, as you engage in that relationship with them and have that conversation with them, they will begin opening up in small ways and reciprocating with you. What's cool about this is they'll start experiencing that connection with you. And it will be the first time they've really done that with many people in, in their life, maybe anybody. Afterward, they will usually have a withdrawal period where they'll kind of <gasps> pull back after the conversation, but then they'll come back into it again. Okay. On their own. You won't have to like grab them and drag them back into the conversation. Um, confusion and nervousness, tension are usually their hallmarks of their avoidance. These are not the people who go hostile and who start layering in attacks. These are not the people who use any manipulative tactics. When you see people using manipulative tactics, pretty good sign that it is not this group of people. Okay. It is not the people who um, consistently love bomb over and over and over and then leverage it on purpose. Okay. These people might love bomb a little bit, but they they'll actually be they'll feel bad if they ever learn what that is. They just think that's a normal behavior. The love bombing guys, for those who don't know, love bombing is when you um, you mimic the signs of having oxytocin. So you mimic the signs of somebody who loves the other person. And what you're doing is uh, the avoidant person. All they really track is dopamine. That's really the only measurement they have of feeling good or bad. So they are trying to give the other person dopamine and feel good. They don't understand that they're giving the other person oxytocin and how addictive that can feel. So they are just trying to make the person feel good as like a thank you, but also as hedge my bets, make the person be happy. Then if something goes wrong, the person won't be awful to me. The person will remember that I made them happy. That's generally what they're trying to do. Okay. Green Gatsby, the scared cat avoidance sounds very cute and endearing once you peel back the onion layers. And they are like they're adorable. It's but but um remember that they're scared. Remember that they have been deeply hurt. Remember that this forms from pain. This doesn't form from like I was totally loved and everything was fine. It, it can form from what we used to call latchkey kids who were just left completely alone to raise yourself essentially from age six and up, and you were alone all the time. It can form from that. It can form from a complete lack of, of real human interaction and you never got much. And mom was totally disengaged from birth. It, it can just be, I never experienced human love and I don't even know what that is. So now people just make demands of me and I try to stay away from other people because they confuse me. Okay. Um, 
people with autism spectrum disorder, people with autism um, or Asperger's will mimic avoidant attachment quite often and they get a bad rap and they get treated badly for being avoidant. Usually they're, they're confused and alarmed and they've been mistreated by other people for not knowing social cues. Um, and they may look avoidant and they may act avoidant. They may even be avoidant. You can have both autism and avoidant attachment style. Um, it's weird how a lot of guys with autism will end up quite often with women who are really anxiously attached, but then the anxiously attached women get really angry and frustrated because none of their approval seeking behaviors work the way it would with an avoidant person, because you're not working with an avoidant person. You're working with someone who just kind of passively resembles an avoidant person. Um, so just as a complete sidebar there, just anyone in the audience who's ever experienced that, there you go. Or seen that. Um, Ways to track if some if an avoidant person is the hurtful kind, okay? They are very transactionally measurement, measuring. They actively call out, I did this for you, now you owe me that thing over there, right? They are very defensive about things and not just a little bit like, well, hey, you know, you did that too, but like, well, you're the really the problem. You are the problem. And they shift everything onto you, okay? Um, they saturate you with love bombing up front and then pull away and begin the process of what's called breadcrumbing. They, they leave a trail of, of kindness to, to keep you going once you wear out, but just enough. And they're minimizing the effort they put into the relationship. They don't have conversations with you. They have dictations to you or ultimatums to you. Okay. Um, keep that in mind that that is what you're looking at. Archeon, Adam, how much is a single session with you to find my life purpose? Good question. Um, I have a sale going on right now on single sessions. Um, I have a sale going on. Email me, shoot me an email, Archeon, support at adamlanesmith.com and let's talk. Because uh, the, the, the price, I don't want to say the price changes, but... I, uh, I often try to put things on discount so that people can afford them and people and, and things will change. So shoot me an email support at adamlanesmith.com. We'll talk about working together. I'll get you the best. I'll get you the best approach um, for breadcrumbing to leaving you to starve. Hundred percent vital. Hundred percent. Those are the people you're looking at. Really manipulative tactics. Um, avoidant people who are the scared type, the nervous type of avoidant. Um, they won't leave you usually feeling wounded. They won't use you, leave you feeling used. They, they won't um, gaslight you. They don't shift it around to where everything's your fault. Now they may legitimately believe that you are the one who's irrational because you're going to be talking about weird things they don't understand, like, you know, emotions and feelings and, and emotional connection and emotional intimacy and needing certain closeness. And they won't get that. Um, so you might at times feel gaslighted, but it is not their intention to gaslight. They are not intentionally manipulative. The other more manipulative versions are, right? It's a defense tactic on purpose to do that. Very, 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 very common. Um, track that, okay? If you have a conversation with this type of avoidant person and point out things that are not satisfactory... They kind of bristle and they, they get really tense, but they don't go on the attack. They don't go on the attack, you guys. That's a huge way to differentiate between the two avoidant types. If they go on the attack, very different. And you may not be able to work with that person at all if they go on the attack because they, they don't believe that the relationship is going to work. They think other people are unfair and they believe you will actively hurt them if you get the chance. Okay. They tend to track other people as if everyone around them is a sociopath. This is what it feels like to be an avoidant person is to believe you live in a world of sociopaths. Okay. Keep that in mind. You live in a world of either, either crazy people or sociopaths. So those are pretty much your two options in the world. Um, the more manipulative version of people of avoidant people will say, well, everybody is, is crazy or an, a sociopath. I will do everything I can not to be either of those things. I just have to be better than the next person. Right. These, the, the, the ethical, the scare, the nervous avoidant type people that we talk about here, they're not just trying to do the bare minimum. They're actually trying to do what's right. They have a sense of right and wrong. And they'll tell you that. And, and they, they will police themselves by it. Even as they, they do sometimes break that code, just like anxiously attached people do, um, to try to stay safe, to try to run away. Um, very, very common. Okay. So all the things I talked about in that, in those anxious, those avoidant attachment videos, 
They are for people who are going to work with you when you start giving them legitimate care, when you start talking with them about those needs and expectations while framing it as this will be fair. I'm not going to hurt you. I want to do everything fairly with you. Okay. They usually will reciprocate because they're so surprised that there's somebody out there who wants to have that conversation with them. They're shocked and they're confused. Look for confusion. Look for doubt. Look for hesitation. Look for nervous first steps. Those are typical responses from somebody when you have that honest conversation with them about fairness, but also what you need and what they need. Those are first steps you should be looking for if that avoidant person is going to start opening up. The goal is not to keep them avoidant forever. And you guys, anyone who's been on my channel, you guys know I don't teach that people are going to stay one attachment style for the rest of their life. Even the mainstream media is starting to catch up to the fact that attachment styles change. Okay. Attachment styles change. So yes, avoidantly attached people absolutely should be doing their work to become more secure and avoidantly attached people out there. I'm not coming at you, but you know that you need to do that work and become more secure with the healthy people in your life who are actually caring and loving. Okay. Gatsby, I did live in a crazy world until I did my work to change my own ways. No other way out. I know hundred percent until you start tracking and connecting with more securely attached people who are not going to destroy you. Absolutely. Absolutely vital that you, you get out and get out of those patterns and healthier relationships. Avoidantly attached people. Let's jump back into this for a moment. Um, how do you know they are not going to change? Okay, let's talk about how to stay safe. How do you know they are not going to change? After that, avoidantly attached people, if you're watching this, I would like to talk to you about what to expect in relationships and what is so different. Okay, what are you missing? What am I missing is the biggest question I get from my avoidantly attached clients who come in. Adam, what am I missing? Usually they circle around for six months before they buy a session with me. Then they come in for a single session and say, okay, what's the deal? What am I missing? What do you think I'm missing? And we talk about the reality of deep, intimate relationships and, and just what they have missed. Biochemically, what they have missed. Neurologically, what they have missed. Relationally, life satisfaction-wise, what they have missed. How a lot of that time that leads to a uh, uh, midlife crisis, things like that. Um, so we'll talk about what avoidant people have missed here in a moment, but signs that they are not going to work with you. Okay. You try the methods I talked about in that video. The nice thing about the, those two videos that I talked about, don't do this, do, do this, right? Don't sabotage your relationship this way. Do this to build the relationship. Manipulatively avoidant attached people will get more hostile and more, I don't want to say aggressive, but more distant. They will pull away. Their avoidance will increase. They will get um, more disconnected from you in the relationship, more suspicious of you. They will actively start dismantling the relationship themselves if you follow the method that I talked about in those two avoidantly attached videos. If you do those things, you will not maintain a great relationship with a bad avoidant person. Okay. You are either going to help the avoidant person become secure or you're going to destroy the relationship. That's what a lot of people, unfortunately, in the comments missed. They thought that, uh, and many of them had been with really painful, avoidantly attached people who were very cruel. And so they popped in and said, look, everything you're talking about will make me their slave. It'll make me their doormat. It will get people hurt. You want people to get abused. You're encouraging women to just stay with abuse forever. And, and absolutely not. If you follow the methods from those videos, you will actually destroy an abusive relationship. You will destroy a relationship with an avoidant person that is manipulative and hurtful. They will flee screaming from the relationship, calling you every four letter word in the book. Um, but, but the avoidantly attached people who actually want to build a loving relationship with you, that many of the methods I taught in there will actually start you on a pathway toward a secure relationship with them. It will start them asking questions like, what is different here? Why is this working? Why does this feel so good? What are you doing talking to me like this? Nobody talks like this. Nobody is this honest. Nobody is this clear. Nobody is this upfront. Nobody is this safe, right? Then it opens up a whole new world to them and they can really do that work. This is not about saving avoidant people. We're not out here trying to rescue them, right? We're not out here trying to martyr ourselves to please them. That's not the goal here, right? And, and avoidant, uh, avoidantly attached people. That, that's not, I'm not, I'm not sending an army of extroverted, anxiously attached or extroverted secure people to hunt you down and adopt you. That's not the goal here. Um, 
the goal is to give people a framework to either destroy a bad relationship or transform a distant relationship into a loving, fulfilling one for both people. That's the goal of both those videos. So check those videos out, watch that, follow those methods and make sure you're secure so you can do that work yourself. Now, what are avoidantly attached people missing? Arkian, I just sent you an email. You should be getting it right now. Thank you, Arkian. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Vital. I'll say some will open, get openly aggressive at the far end of the spectrum and some will. And that will drive them away, and, and that will reveal that as well. So be careful, but yes, drive them away. Drive away the harmful people by using those methods that will begin helping and, and showing love to the good people. It's one and the same, you guys. It's not really neutral here. Um, what are avoidantly people, avoidantly attached missing? What are avoidantly attached people missing? I have a video coming soon on this channel called The Biochemistry of Avoidant Attachment. It'll come out in the next couple of months, the next couple of weeks. Um, my editing team is making it gorgeous. It's an incredible video. I can't wait for you guys to see it. So check that out in the next coming weeks, okay? The biochemistry of avoidant attachment. In there, I discuss extensively um, the, the big five brain chemicals that avoidantly attached people deal with, that all of us deal with. And there's more than five, but the big five. Um, oxytocin, most avoidantly attached people have no frame of reference for how amazing it feels to feel loved and then to feel an abundance of love that turns into affection in your heart. So you then become affectionate toward other people. Most of them have not experienced that they've experienced dopamine, which feels good. And then you want to feel, you want to keep feeling good. You feel satisfied temporarily. Okay. Very, very different feeling. And that's what most avoidant people track as I feel temporarily satisfied. I'm going to help you feel temporarily satisfied. Okay. It is, it's, it's the difference between making love and banging one out on your own really quick in your room. Okay. Or helping someone else bang one out really quick. Right. It's the, it's a gigantic gulf. One of them is oxytocin, sharing an experience that bonds you closer as, as you do it, that makes you feel more trusting and more caring. It makes you feel cared for, right? Very big difference between you know, a quick sugar rush. Dopamine's that quick sugar rush. Um, even serotonin. So a lot of uh, avoidantly attached people have signs of low serotonin. Uh, they can often be prone to depression, um, but like a sort of like white knuckle, get through it, grin and bear it, you know, you put some dirt on it and keep going kind of depression, walking depression, um, very low serotonin levels because they're not getting much serotonin at all through their relationships at all. Almost it's all again, it's all dopamine. And all their habits are usually dopamine, except of a lot of avoidant people, the nervous avoidant type people, uh, they have a heavy fixation on fitness, working out and food, especially like tryptophan and heavy proteins, carnivore diet, stuff like that, paleo diet. Um, they get every scrap and fume of serotonin they can get into their brain because they're running on so little that they need every tiny edge they can get just to feel okay. So really common sign. Okay. Um, Vasopressin, vasopressin, um, teamwork, the teamwork hormone, very, very low typically and, and avoidantly attached people because they don't work as a team with other people. Their belief is other people are not to be trusted, especially during times of stress. So when a crisis or an issue hits and there's stress, I need to get away from other people. I need to solve it alone, or I need to kind of like work other people into the right angles. And then I can solve it myself using those other people really quick by ping ponging off of them but I am the one who solved it really common for people with avoidant attachment to have that problem. And they don't actually vasopressin bond with anybody that way. Okay. Um, all of those brain chemicals, right? Low oxytocin leads to low GABA, which leads to low melatonin, which often can lead to chronic sleep issues, insomnia, um, lower, lower, uh, resilience against stress, lower resilience against anxiety, lower resilience against depression, walking depression. Uh, very, very common for people with avoidantly attached brains to have really, really poor brain chemistry and really, really be unhappy and have low quality of life as a result. Even as they're like performing at high level above other people, their finances are on track, they're owning businesses, they're executives, like the, they're blowing things out of the water and everyone else is like, well, you're killing it. And they're like, no, I hate my life. And they feel so alone and they have no frame of reference for not feeling alone. Okay. This is really, 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 really common with avoidantly attached people who are the nervous, scared cat type of avoidant, not the manipulative type. 
again, if anybody Googles avoidant attachment, you're going to find like 500 pages of like burn them at the stake. They're horrible. They're monsters. They have no feelings. They're all sociopaths. They're every, all of them as a narcissist, right? They're horrible. They'll, they'll blight your crops and steal your children in the night. Right. And that's, and that's usually told from the perspective of anxiously attached people who've been deeply hurt by very avoidantly attached uh, and manipulatively avoidantly attached kind of people. Okay. Really, really, really common. Um, Green Gatsby, Adam, this may sound strange. How does one connect with an avoidant man during intercourse? Really good question. I gotta be careful of YouTube censors. Um, intercourse is just tricky for people with avoidant attachment. Women with avoidant attachment will usually prefer to face away or have very minimal kissing, interestingly. So a lot of the couples who come in where it's like an anxiously attached man and an avoidantly attached woman, he's like, I don't get it. She's always wanted to face away. No kissing, no foreplay. Everything's like disconnected. It's like blam, wham, bam, get it done. It's very like mechanical. I don't get it. That's not how women are supposed to act. That's avoidantly attached women. Um, avoidantly attached men, very disconnected usually, low eye contact. Um, helping them, sitting them down and saying, hey, when we are doing this, here's what means a lot to me. Here's what fulfills me. Their goal, if they're ethically avoidant, nervously avoidant, their goal is not to just use you really quick and get out. Their goal actually is to make you happy and to make you feel good, but they don't have a frame of reference for what feels good. So sharing an experience, really difficult for them. Um, let me explain. So I, I had a male client who came in and he was married. Um, and he was telling me like, we're in our third year. She's telling me that the, the bedroom is, is just so disconnected for her. Her drive is like down and I'm trying to do everything right. Like all the books tell me like you know, flowers, chocolates, like massages, like compliments, none of it's working. And, and I'm like, I've, I've done everything like physically I've done everything. And, and I'm, I'm doing the techniques and everything the books tell me to do during, and it's not working. And, and I, and I explained to them, okay especially the female drive runs on heavily on oxytocin, which comes from an emotionally intimate connection. Do you know what that means? And they're like, no, what is that? So I have to explain emotional intimacy, openness, right? Transparency, um, sharing about your day, uh, nurturing, right? Physical affection that is non-sexual in nature. And then physical affection that's a little sexual in nature, but not full into the bedroom. Um, and then growing that oxytocin bond and showing that affection, that warmth. And I and I walk these men through understanding that intimacy, that uh, emotional intimate component. And, and and it's it's like a foreign language to them because they've never experienced much of that themselves. They have no idea. So when they then share, they're like, what? like and they hear it, they're like, why would someone want this? And I say, well, why don't you go do it and, and, and try it and, 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 and really relax into the moment. And when they do, they're like, they come back and they say, Adam, this, it felt weird. I'm kind of embarrassed. I don't know if I'm a girl, but like, I kind of enjoyed it. Well, yeah, that's called oxytocin. When you lower your guard, when your stress levels come down, your cortisol levels come down, cortisol blocks the reception of oxytocin. Um, but when your cortisol levels come down and you relax your guard and you actually share a moment with the other person, okay, you have a wonderful bond with that person. You start releasing different brain chemistry, okay? Your oxytocin goes way up. Your GABA goes way up, which is cool. Uh, your serotonin goes way up. Yeah, dopamine's there, but it's not, it's not the main meal anymore. It's a side dish, right? Everything else goes up and the intimacy gets so much better. Um, I, I compared it this way. So I had another male client come in very avoidantly attached and he was like, look, I, I don't have friends I, and I don't know why I'm, I'm super charismatic and everyone loves me, but I have no friendships and I can't maintain a romantic relationship. And I said, well, look, most people with avoidant attachment, they treat relationships like a drive by you drive by really quick and scream out your car window at somebody and you compliment them and you give them dopamine, but you don't slow down. You don't stop. You just drive by. And you do drive by moments of connection with people, but you get out of there as fast as you can to avoid entanglement. Real connection means you slow your car to a stop and you speak to them through the window or you put it in park and you get out and you talk with them for a moment. And then you get back in your car and you continue on your way. You pause. So I said, are you dry doing drive bys or are you pausing? And he was like, it, it blew his mind to sit and think about that. So avoidantly attached men 100% can learn this. It is not outside of their nature. It's a survival mechanism that has kicked on that they have never clicked out of. Okay. It, it clicked on in their childhood because nobody in their childhood was supportive or caring. So their brain turned that part off and clicked them into survival mode to keep them safe and alive. 
they've never had frame of reference to understand that that's not how the rest of the world works. So they get into other relationships and they have no frame of reference for that at all. Okay. I, again, I work with this extensively in my coaching. If you guys need help with this, if you're in a couple like this, if you're somebody like this, I can 100% help you. Send me an email. I think I can drop it in chat. Um, support at Adam Lane smith.com there is my email you guys are welcome to shoot me an email if you guys have questions about this i can help i have single sessions on on uh discount right now i have coaching packages on discount it's the last day uh, tomorrow's the last day of my january sale i have the attachment boot camp video course that walks you through 10 clear steps to fix attachment if you guys are in a couple and you, one of you is anxious, one of you is avoidant. So many attachment couples, so many couples with attachment issues, they take my boot camp course and they learn about each other. And it drives incredible conversations that you guys have been avoiding. And it shows you how to build that intimacy together. Really, really important that you know how to do that and that you can build that bond. Okay. Absolutely crucial that you guys be able to do that. So that course is currently 20% off right now until tomorrow night. Check it out. Shoot me an email. Let me know. Um, everything's on my website, adamlanesmith.com. There's my website. Check that out. Um, does this guy have a book or something I could read more about his opinion? Craig, absolutely. Right over my shoulder. So Slaying Your Fear is available on Amazon. Exhausted Wives, Bewildered Husbands is available on Amazon. Those two books right there. Um, Exhausted Wives, Bewildered Husbands is about avoidantly attached men and anxiously attached women and the number one dynamic that leads to divorce and how to fix it. Okay. That is available on Amazon. I wrote that when I was a licensed marriage and family therapist. I was there for many, many years before I retired from that. I retired my license so I could coach internationally. So there you go. Selling your fear. Also no more Mr. Nice guy. No more Mr. Nice guy is good. It's primarily for anxiously attached men. Interestingly, I love the book, love the book. And I have an interview with Dr. Glover here on this channel. Um, but yeah, it's more for anxiously attached men, I would say. Oh, okay. That's my two cents. Gatsby, I was with my partner last year who became avoidant over the years, especially during COVID, based on how many times he got rejected in high school, his early 20s, we would hook up to fill a void. I, I would bet, and I hear that, I got avoidant because women rejected me in high school. Typically, um, those guys are very avoidant in, from childhood anyway, and those experiences make them more avoidant. It's not usually like, you know, I got rejected in high school and it was my or origin story. It, and I hear that a lot from, from my coaching clients because they're like, well, I didn't have bad parents. They just weren't around ever anywhere. So I was just never loved. And it's like that, that's the problem. That's the problem. And then you were very sensitive to rejection. So when you tried to connect with somebody in high school, you got rejected because you didn't know how to authentically connect with people. And they thought it was kind of strange. So they probably pushed you away. And then you felt it was a crushing rejection. So then it just cemented what you had already suspected and what you already believed. That's generally the story. That's actually the story typically right there. Just FYI. Um, so there you go, you guys. That's avoiding the attached people in a nutshell. I am getting ready to pop open members only chat. If you click down at the bottom, the button that says join, you click that, it opens up all three layers of memberships. If you pop there, you can be a member and support the channel. And it will really help. It helps me keep putting this information out. Members only. Here we go. So whoever's a member can now post in the chat. You guys ask me questions. We're going to do this. Let's jump in. What questions do you guys have tonight about avoidant attached men or avoidantly attached women? The floor is open. Hit me with your questions. I love to interact with you guys during this time. So hit me up. What do you got for me? I know there's a lot of you in here tonight. Gatsby, I was banging my head the entire time last year. 100 last sentence partner. Oh yeah. hundred percent. It is. It, it can feel when you're with an avoidantly attached partner, it can feel like banging your head against a wall because they don't have a frame of reference for being loved. And you're going to be trying to speak to them about like the color red and they've never, ever seen the color red. So they disbelieve you that it exists and you're constantly trying to get them to see the color red right in front of their face. And they absolutely can't. Any way to idea if you're at the low end of avoidant. Um, do you have a fear that other people will not be fair with you so you avoid conflict? And if so, are you able to open up and talk with people about it and then resolve it? Or do you find yourself avoiding conflict more than talking about it? That would be a really good way of indicating if you're at the low end of that avoidance. 
I didn't know avoidant men were so disparaged. Oh man, the internet would gut avoidant men on site if they could. If you go on TikTok and say the slightest kind thing about an avoidant man, like they will hunt you down and find you. I have, if you guys check the, the, the comment sections on my avoidantly attached men videos, like here's how to love an avoidantly attached man. Like don't, they are worthless. They are garbage. They should leave. You put them on an Island and then nuke the Island. Like, Oh, people are vicious. And, and it's because, um, typically I believe, it's because number one, many of those people are or were anxiously attached. So they were very, very vulnerable. And then they got connected with very manipulative, hurtful, avoidant people who are way down that spectrum, who then just like shattered their heart and then did it again and again and again and again. And remember, those anxiously attached people have been hurt since childhood. So it's a repeat of their worst fears coming true over and over and over. And then they get on the internet and they can vent all that anger and resentment and, and, and pain onto the internet, onto these avoidantly attached people who are like, oh, I just want to be left alone. I don't want to hurt anybody. I live alone in my apartment. I just kind of work my job. Hey, I wonder if I could learn about avoidant attachment on the internet. And they pick up their phone and it's like, we wish you were dead. Right. And, and that's, that's the internet in a nutshell right now, you guys. So that's why, that's why I have pro avoidant content on my channel now. You guys would be astounded. Go go in the comment sections. Check them out sometime. Uh, those two new videos that popped over the weekend, um, just from last week, how to love an avoidant man. There's part one and part two. Check out the comment sections, you guys. It's it's a mix of avoidant attached people being like, this is the first kind thing I've ever heard somebody say about avoidant people. Thank you for this. I feel like a person. And then the like, I am enraged that you would say something kind about these monsters kind of thing. So go in there. Check them out. You're going to see it. What kind of attachment style do you think Twitter Swift has? Oh, I, I have a hard time dissecting people from afar. Um, she is very, very careful in a lot of her behaviors. Um, I don't know, to be honest with you. It's something, it, it seems like it may be something chaotic. It could be a disorganized attachment style. It could be a blend of the two. Those tend to be more chaotic. Um, some of the things Trav, Travis that has said in some of his interviews make me think he leans a little bit more toward um, disorganized style himself and two disorganized people tend to get together. Interestingly, um, they tend to be drawn to each other. So it's fascinating. I, she could be disorganized. I would love to talk with her and have a conversation with her someday. I, I couldn't put a pin in it exactly just yet. But Taylor, if you're watching this at some point, call me. I will uh, talk to you about attachment and we'll figure it out. Maybe you're maybe you're amazingly secure. I don't know, but I'd love to have that conversation. Explains why some parts of my ex is lighter than... Yes, Hawk. There you go. There you go. Exactly. I know what you're talking about. Adam, you're the savior we don't deserve, but truly need. I, I am not here to be a savior. I am here to give you guys the tools and the assistance that you need to start building the lives that you want to live. Okay? This is... This is me sharing this information and sharing my re experience and my research and collecting it for you guys to pull from and build the lives that you want to live. That is the goal here. I want that. I will do that as long as you guys trust me in doing that. And I appreciate all of your support, all the members here on this channel. Thank you so much for helping make that possible. I appreciate you guys. If you guys want to become a member, hit the join button down below. Help out that help that works. So I can keep doing that. But that is the goal, you guys. And I'm going to keep doing that. Just going to keep it up. Keep, please, please keep helping me and keep pulling me along because I appreciate you. You're our internet pop up. Well, there you go. I'll take that one. I'll take that one. Thank you. I can do confrontations and resolution. I still have notable trust issues with others. I'm sensitive to injustice. That's okay. Sounds like you're growing. Sounds like you're growing and what you need is experience seeing that legitimately good loving people exist and that there is good out there in the world. Sounds like maybe you're a, you're an avoidant in recovery. They're vital. You might be an avoidant in recovery, which is not a bad thing to be. Avoidant people can, uh, they can heal pretty quick and they're usually very high functioning and they really only need a couple of people to be overwhelmingly satisfied in their life. They usually don't need 50 people and constant reassurance. It's, it's, I need a few people. It feels so incredible. I don't know how to trust this, but I'm going to keep doing it. I'm kind of nervous. I'm going to back off. Wait, now I'm lonely. So I'm going to lean back in. That's it's kind of the process. That's why I call them scared cats. Cause once you show a cat, that kind of love, they want all the love <laughs> and they keep coming back and maybe they step away for a minute, but they come right back. Okay. They're very much the same.
really good questions in here, you guys. What else? What else do you want to know about avoidantly attached people tonight? What else do you want to know about avoidantly attached men or women? Let's let's open up that conversation a little bit more. What do you got for me tonight? And thank you. Thank you for being my supporters here on this channel. Thank you for being members. I appreciate that. Remember, again, one more time. Remember that my I, the uh, January sale for New Year New Me is running through tomorrow. Do not miss that. You can check all those pieces out on my website. My, my single sessions are off on discount, 30% off. The attachment bootcamp video course, 20% off right now. Do not miss this opportunity to fix your attachment, you guys. I want all of the love. There you go, Vital. There you go. Keep going, Vital. From someone who's working on her anxious attachment, I'm seeing improvements in myself. There you go. There you go. Building the attachment together, step by step. That's what we are doing here as a community, and I love it. Thank you, you guys. Other questions for me about avoiding attachment? Anything. I'm here to answer. I'm here to help. Anything. Isn't it funny? You can hear. You guys probably can't hear it, but uh, my new baby is. Uh, she was crying tonight. It's, she's she's a new baby. When she when she cries, when she's little. Attachment forms when we're little children, um, and we cry to get our needs met. And we see if people will respond to our cries, and we see how fast, and we see if we're scared. Do people comfort us? So, she's uh, four days old. You saw a lot of people with who have autism. Present with symptoms of avoidant attachment. How do I know if I have it? How do you know if you have autism or how do you know if you have avoidant attachment? Because they're very two different things and, and two very, very different uh, sets of, of things to track for. So let me know which one you mean. All I can say is thanks for the library videos that used to work on these things. 100% Hawk, 100%. And thank you for your support. I appreciate you taking care of each other here. That's what this is. Avoidant, Archeon, avoidant. Um... So people with autism um, typically don't necessarily have as much of a drive to connect with other people um, as much. They don't have zero. They just have very lower levels of connection desire typically, or they want to connect in different ways, um, but they still want to have discussions with people. If a conflict comes up, they tend to voice that concern often pretty quick and say, hey, this is bothering me. We need to fix it. Or, hey, I don't like this thing. And and they sometimes will try to have a reasonable, rational discussion with the other person. And if other people don't, then they're kind of surprised and they pull back. Um, avoidantly attached people innately believe other people are incapable of having reasonable, rational discussions that lead to conflict resolution. So if you've crossed that line and you now believe nobody will ever resolve conflict with you and you must actively avoid other people during stress and you must solve problems in spite of other people. And if you are now avoiding connection with other people, not just because you don't necessarily have a desire for it, but you are actively avoiding it as if you are avoiding pain. That is much more of an indicator that you may have crossed over from just autistic features over into avoidant attachment. Keep that in mind. I'm happy she's a healthy and balanced baby. 100%. Thank you so much, Gatsby. I appreciate that. Really good question, Archeon. Really good question. What other questions do you guys have tonight in the last few minutes that we have? Yeah, that doesn't sound like me. I'm autistic and a social butterfly. Yeah, then you may not have avoidant attachment. One thing that I do find um, people with, avoid with autistic features um, often have very confused attachment. Uh, they're very confused because they don't know how social connections work. They don't recognize that social behaviors are a system. They don't intuitively grasp that system. So they don't see a system at all. So everything seems arbitrary and confusing. One of the number one things I, I have, I would say anywhere from 10% to 25% of my coaching clientele have features of autism they come in with. And, and they'll tell me that right up front. Um, but they're confused about how relationships work. So I just sit and explain relationship dynamics and psychology as a system. And they're like taking extensive note, like four pages of notes in each session. Um, and they come away with this wealth of this is the system that I never intuitively grasped. And then they see the code in the matrix and it suddenly makes sense to them and all their relationships make sense. And then they simply start plugging and playing their life quality goes way up. Their relationship goes way up their marriage or romance or whatever. Or friendships go way up and everybody else is fulfilled. And so are they. And that's one of the, it's one of my most, it's one of the things I love most 
about my my coaching is that I get to work directly with people who have autistic features and just teach them relationship systems and social systems. Point blank, this is what works, this is what doesn't. So I love it. Gatsby, I wonder what uh, what are some questions to ask a man during the dating phase if he happens to be avoidant, but you want to show you are not a threat. Um, hey, how do you like to resolve conflicts? How do you tend to resolve? What do you do when a conflict hits? How do you act during stress? Hey, you know, how often do you need personal space? How often are you looking for that? What do you do to get it? What would you do to let me know if you needed personal space and you needed some time away? How comfortable are you just asking for the things you need? Really great questions right there. And then you can tell them, this is what I would prefer. This is what would make it comfortable for me. Could you just tell me right up front? Could we just set an agreement that you would need this time, right? Be very clear. And, and again, reiterate, I want to be fair with you. I just need to know what's happening. If they can follow you into that and start being a little more clear, they'll be confused. But if they can start being more clear, that's a really good sign. If they avoid that, I love men who are on the spectrum. They're so cool and so enduring. They can be. They can be because they're just... They, they, men and women on the spectrum tend to be very, what you see is what you get, which is cool. It's just many people have hurt them and put them down usually over the years. So they're confused and, and hurt and kind of nervous in their own way. And uh, when you help them by making things make sense, they thrive. They just need an instruction manual is usually what it is. That's usually what my coaching with them turns into is an instruction manual, ongoing instruction manual for relationship success. So, guys, with that, our evening draws to a close. I will be back tomorrow night, 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time, same time. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you weren't already subscribed. Make sure you turn on notifications, ring the little bell. Um, get those so that you don't miss any of these lives or any of my great videos that are coming. Go back, check out, if you're curious now, go back and check out those avoidantly attached men videos, the two of them. Look at the comment sections if you dare. Um Check them out. Leave some comments of your own in support or against, I suppose, if that's where you're at. I'm not going to tell you how to feel. Um, let me know where you guys are at. And I appreciate you guys supporting me. Thank you so much. Make sure you don't miss my coaching sale. Check out my website. Check out all of that. Um, email me if you have questions. Support at adamlanesmith.com. I am here to help. Please reach out. Let me know how I can assist you. If you're a couple with an avoidant person or an anxious person or both, reach out. I have resources and I will help. I will assist. It is my job and my passion. So thank you, you guys. I'm honored that I can support you. I'm honored to have your support. Thank you for, thank you, Gatsby. Thank you, Hawk. Thank you, Vital. Thank you, Archeon. Thank you, everybody for being here tonight. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Take care of yourselves. I will see you tonight, tomorrow night, 23 hours from now, 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time. Be here. We're going to do another live stream. It'll be great. So take care of yourselves to then.